Heat is one of many forms of energy and we will be looking specifically at calculating values for heat that is either given off during a chemical reaction or absorbed through a chemical reaction. So heat or the transfer of heat always accompanies any process. Usually it's lost to the environment as a inefficiency. But in chemistry we're going to take a look at uh, values for heat. So I have a reaction written down the evaporation of water. So if we spray ourselves with uh, water and then let it evaporate on us and turn into a gas, we're actually going to cool off because that process absorbs heat from us. So if we wrote, uh, if we write that down, H2O in the liquid phase to turn liquid water into the gas phase, it makes sense to us that we add heat to that process. So heat can either be added by heating up a pot full of water or if this process happens on our skin spontaneously, it's going to absorb heat from our skin. So we'll feel cooler. And just quickly, this is an endothermic reaction. If we have to add heat or if that reaction absorbs heat. So we're going to talk more specifically about uh, endothermic versus exothermic. Okay, so the transfer of heat is going to accompany any process. If I slide this paper across the table, the friction created will actually generate a little bit of heat. So we may or may not feel heat being absorbed or generated, but that's what this chapter is about. So our chapter starts out with the first law of thermodynamics. So I've given us all three, uh, but the next two we'll see next semester in general chemistry two. So the first law of thermodynamics can be written mathematically as the change in energy, and this is internal energy, is equal to the change in the work, or the work is the W, the change in the work and the change in the heat. So energy can be described or defined as the capacity to transfer heat or to do work. And the next two laws of thermodynamics deal with entropy, which is disorder. So we'll get to that later. But part of what thermodynamics explains to us is what the universe does spontaneously. So that's of interest to chemists and other people, spontaneous, uh, because if something occurs spontaneously, then we're going to make more money off of that. If we have to add energy to a system to cause a reaction to happen, then that's going to cost us money. So there's a couple factors that deal with what the universe chooses to do, and going downhill in energy is one, and going uphill in disorder is the other term. So we are only going to focus on the first law, and we're specifically going to focus on Q, which is heat. So in chemistry, many times the work term is zero. So we'll see that on the next slide. Okay. Uh, so if we're talking about heat, if the heat is transferred when the pressure is constant, then we can replace the letter Q, a lowercase letter, with a capital letter H. And the big deal about that is a capital letter is a state function and it just makes the math easy. So all we care about for state functions is final minus initial state. And that is not dependent on the path taken. A lowercase letter would be path dependent, which makes the math a lot more complicated. So it's very good that we can use uh, state function values because we know many of them. So we call this delta H 
the delta always means final minus initial. So delta H with a little circle and a little F is the heat transferred when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements. And we'll see an example of that. So these values are listed in the back of our chemistry book and much more extensive values are listed in the CRC handbook of chemistry and physics. So many of these values are already well known and tabulated. Uh, we're going to see a lot of different subscripts on H just depending on what process is occurring. So the formation of a solid, uh, we would call that delta H lattice. If we have a combustion reaction, so for burning a fuel, we would say delta H combustion or heat of combustion. And we're going to solve for delta H in a variety of ways. No matter how we solve for it, we'll get the correct answer and the same answer because that's what it means uh, to have a state function. So on the next slide, we're going to look at three different ways that we will be solving for the heat that accompanies any reaction. So we might say delta H. We might say the heat change or the change in heat. Uh, this is a Greek word, enthalpy. So we might say enthalpy change to mean delta H or the enthalpy of a reaction. So we want to get used to seeing all of these uh, terms, meaning we're trying to calculate that value that accompanies any chemical reaction. So we are going to focus on that on the next video, but we're going to be given a delta H value for a specific reaction and then perhaps go from grams of something to moles, then use the balanced equation where that given energy value is part of the balanced equation. So we'll see an example of that coming up. We can also solve for delta H using values that are in the appendix. So each formula that's in the equation will look up the values for those delta H values that are given in the book, multiply them by however many moles there are in the balanced equation, and just take products minus reactants. And then Hess's law is sort of like a puzzle where we combine equations that already have de delta H values given and we play around with them, rearrange them to come up with the equation that we're interested in and combine the delta H values accordingly. The other concept that we're going to look at in this chapter, it really, we could talk about it in terms of delta H, but we will do specific heat capacity calculations. So any substance's heat capacity is kind of similar to its boiling point or density. It's just a value that we know and the values depend on that substance's ability to store heat. So if we think of storage like capacity or the overhead capacity of an airlines, you can only fit so much baggage in that um, designated area. Well, heat capacity is similar in that we can only store so much energy into a compound and then the more complicated the compound is, the more um, places that heat energy could go. But there's a capacity or a maximum amount of energy that any substance can absorb and after that that energy goes into heating up the substance. So if we look at water versus aluminum, water's heat capacity, this value would just be in a table in our textbook, uh, in the CRC handbook of physics and chemistry. Uh, the heat capacity for water is over four joules per gram per degree change. So that temperature uh, is going to be the temperature increase or decrease. 
If we look at aluminum, its value is less than a fourth of the value for water. So we know that we have to add more heat, so more heat needed to raise the temperature of water. So we know this if we're heating up some water on the stove, increase the temperature. So if we have the same mass of water on the stove as we do aluminum, the aluminum is going to heat up much uh, quicker because it's a better conductor, but it won't take as much heat to cause the temperature to go up. Okay. So the specific heat was originally defined in calories, and so one calorie is the energy it took to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So if you have taken physics before, you may recognize one calorie is 4.184 joules. Uh, so we are going to work in the SI units, so we won't be using calories. So we'll do example calculations of that. But the equation for heat capacity is this would be the heat added or given off if something cooled down instead of heating up. So that is the same Q that is in the first law of thermodynamics. That's just heat. We have the special case of working with a heat exchange at normal atmospheric pressure. So Q and H for us are the same thing. So heat added, here the M is mass, so that mass would need to be in grams. And C is the value listed uh, in a table somewhere. So the C is the heat capacity value, so this is like density. You would just look it up in a table and use it with the correct units. And then delta T is the temperature change. T final minus T initial. So we'll do a calculation with that as well on the next slide.